Hi guys, this is Pop UK for EvecoPilot.net and today I'm going to be doing the second of my requested videos. This is a, 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 a guy called um, Gyros Hunter or Gyros Hunter, excuse me if I murdered your name there, um, wanted a video on, on jump freighters um, and, and, and asked for about the the fuel and the jump range. So could you make sure on jump freighters, the way you use them, about fuel, jump range, etc. Won't be long probably, but it's an idea. Um, yeah, now what, what I'm going to do instead um, is discuss just jumping capital ship jump drives in general. Um, because it's exactly the same for a, a jump freighter as it is for a carrier, as it is for a dreadnought, as it is for a titan. They, they all jump exactly the same way. The only thing that changes is the amount of fuel and how far they can jump. So first of all, let's talk about, I just clapped for no apparent reason, but okay, we'll soldier on. Um, what you actually need to jump a capital ship. Now, you're going to need at one end, which is the place you hope to land, you're going to need um, a ship that has a Sinosaur field generator fitted. Now the Sinosaur field generator is exactly what it says on the tin. This is the beacon that the, the capital jump drive locks onto. Without it, the capital ship can't jump. There is a few exceptions. If your alliance owns uh, Nullsec Sovereignty, they can put up essentially permanent Sinosaur fields um, on a, that player and stations, but don't worry about them. If you see them, if you do, you'll just see them as a permanent jump location. So assuming that that's not the case, if we pop open our ships here and we grab what have we got here? Do, 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 do. Let's actually have a look here. Oh here we go. So we've got our new little saw and magnate thing that we got as a gift. Thank you, CCP I guess. Looks very pretty. If we pop the fittings open here and then we nip back into our item hanger, we can just take our Sinosaur field generator and dump it on the ship. Simple as that. Now, the only other thing we need is fuel. It consumes liquid ozone. You can see at the moment, I'm consuming 350 units every time I pop the Sinosaur field. Now, by default, I believe this is 500. Um, if we just take the module off the ship, show info here, yeah, 500. So you get a skill um, called Sinosaur field theory which reduces the amount of fuel 10% <coughs> reduction per level on the amount of fuel that it takes so I take that in and then I actually open do my cargo hold here now uh, where have I got some fuel probably in my arc there 250 and obviously you dump the fuel in, it needs to be in the cargo hold of the ship so when you light the sinusoral it will then use that fuel up to create the beacon. Now, you need to have you need to have the Sinosaur field where you want to land the ship. Now, on the other side, you need to have the capital ship or capital ships that you want to jump. Now, different ships, different capital ships can jump different ranges. Okay, um, figuring out exactly how far a capital ship can jump can be a real nightmare to do it manually. Now there are some tools that you can use that make it very easy, but I want you to understand how it works. You don't need to know everything you need to know to do the number crunching to figure out the light years, but it's important that you understand the concepts of of how this is all working. So first things first, you show info on the carrier. Under attributes you have to do jump drive systems, okay? So, I currently need 71.25% of my capacitor to jump. Now that's controlled by a skill. The higher the skill, the less capacity you need to jump. Um, very, very useful stuff. Max jump range at the moment is 13 light years. Again, that's controlled by a skill. The higher the skill, the further you can jump. Very useful again. And it also takes fuel. Uh, again, there's a skill. The higher the skill, the less fuel it uses. So with the proper skills, you can jump a long way with not much fuel, and your cap, is, you know, and your cap's going to be reasonably intact when you land. So 
let's take a look at these skills just quickly to run you through them navigation here you go jump drive calibration jump fuel conservation and jump drive operation right there so that's going to be how far you can go the capacity you have and how much it costs you to get there so every capital ship in the game has a fuel bay inside the fuel bay is the fuel that is relevant to your ship so if we look back again at the jump drive you can see that the Amar ships use helium isotopes so I've got 20,000 helium isotopes there I think I've got a few more spare probably in the fleet hangar or something as well so this ship is all that's all it needs if you've got a capital ship that has the correct fuel in it and a sino for it to jump to it's capable of jumping assuming that we're in range of the sino so as you saw in the show info we can jump 13 light years well what does that mean how, how do we figure out how far 13 light years is and the answer is figuring that out on your own, sat here in space with my ult as a Sino, is, is very, very hard to do. Um, yeah, I, 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 couldn't even, I couldn't even do it, to be honest with you. Now, luckily for us, we don't have to. There's a brilliant tool, um, the Jump Planner. So, evemaps.land.net slash jump. And I'll put this in the description, of course, for you guys. Now, this is pretty much... A, a lifesaver. It's absolutely brilliant. So, if we take um, the system we're in at the moment, HLW, there we go, and we'll add that in, and then we'll put the destination system we want to go in. We're going to go to EC Tac P in Pure Blind because that's all the way up north, miles away. So we've now got our two systems in. Now if you want to, we can add a third system, so we can then add a waypoint in and move them around. Um, if you've got to stop by somewhere or something like that. Now, next up we have the jump options. So again, all we're going to do is just select the ship that we're flying. Again, like we talked before, we've got the different levels. And we have the option to only pass through station systems if we want to. And we can save the settings as well. So making sure you get these skills at the right level. And I'll show you why in a minute. So we'll just set up our jump drive counter 5 for now. And then we'll go. So we get a map, and as you can see, one, two, three, four different jumps. And this is right from the south to the north. We're jumping like the whole way across it. Well, not the whole way across it, but we're jumping a very long way. So we can see, obviously, a map of where we're jumping to. And we can see each system that we have to stop in. So we're starting here at HRW. Then 11 light years away, we end up there. 11 light years away, 11 light years away. And you can see we go through and it shows you the fuel needed <coughs> for each jump. It gives you, tells you who owns the sovereignty. It tells you how many jumps away, uh, how many jumps there have been in the last um, hour, I think, is it? I'm not sure, probably an hour. And then at the bottom you've got a summary. So total we're travelling 45 light years. That's going to consume 27,000 isotopes. Maximum jump range of 14.6 light years. Oh yeah, of course. Sorry, I've got it set to I've got it set to jump drive five. That's why I was a bit confused there. So, you can see now that we need to take a signer and put it in by shear, and then we light the signer there, and we go. Now, once we land there, we can move the signer, or we have a second signer in place, and, and we just hop along these little spots, and eventually we end up at our destination. All well and good. Now let's just I'm just gonna quickly show you guys what happens if you have jump drive calibration one, fuel calibration one. And we won't save these settings. So we're gonna add again HLW. Then we're gonna add EC Tac P. Same route, same distances, but this time we've got level one skills instead. We're only gonna pass by station systems. Now let's have a look. Okay, oh dear. So now we've got to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different jumps. There. It's also going to cost us 44,000 helium isotopes, which is twice what our fuel bay can hold. So you can see now, putting these, the difference between level one and level four is quite a substantial amount. Uh, 
W bump and DC type P oh, DC type P jump add go. There you go. Suddenly we're right back down again. And we're using twenty seven thousand. So nearly half the isotopes basically. And definitely a lot less jumps. So getting these calibrations up is um and that's only with four as well. I think four and five were about the same distance anyway. But yeah, so that's basically, so now we know what we need to jump. We know where we need to jump to. Of course, there are alternatives to these systems. So if you look through this system and you see that, okay, this has got thousands of jumps in the last hour. There's some massive war going on. You can just go back and you can put in an avoid route here. So once you add that into your avoid route, it will then pick a different destination for you. Um, or you can go into sort of systems that don't have stations and put a cloak on your ship. So you put a cloak on the capital, you jump through, and you just immediately cloak. As soon as you've cloaked up, you wait for your capacitor to recharge, and then your sinus or goes off to the next system. Happy days. So what else do we need to know? We know what we need to jump, we know where we're jumping to. Um, how to jump is, is really quite simple. You just have to get in fleet from a capital side. You get in fleet with the Sinosaurus. So whoever's going to launch the Sino, you need to be in their fleet or you can't jump to it. And then all you do is as soon as you're out in space and your session time has finished. Mm, that's interesting. There we go. Bit of, a, bit of a glitch there. You just right click on your capacitor and then you'll get an option that says jump to. Every capital ship has that option, jump to. If one of your if someone in your fleet launches a Sinosaur field, you will see their name and you will see the location of their Sinosaur field in this list. So it'll say Puppy UK HLW. And then you can click and off you go, jump to them. And you'll literally disappear from this location and reload like jumping through a gate, basically. So if it's a capital, it, it's very easy. It's so obviously as soon as you land Bop, you can like, align to a celestial as soon as you land, put yourself in warp, ideally create a safe spot on the way, walk back and cloak up. By the time you've done that, you sit there while you, you know, your fuel comes back up, sorry, your capacitor comes back up, shift fuel around if you need to. Brilliant, easy peasy. The Sinosaur field, there's a little bit more of an art to that. Um, and I say this because basically once you launch your Sinosaur field, you're basically stuck. Now I'm going to grab an anathema here, my little scanning anathema, it doesn't have a sinusoidal field fitted on it, um, but obviously you can imagine it does. Now what you want to be doing for your capitals, there's some very important things. First of all, when a capital ship lands, it can land anywhere within 10 kilometers of where that sinusoidal field was placed. Now the easiest way to have a look at this is using the tactical overlay. And you can see here, so if I stop right here, it literally stopped where I stand there, and launched a Sinosaur field, the capital ship could spawn over here, like literally in the state. You see that 10 ring there? It could spawn inside the station. If it jumps in and it's inside that station, it's going to just fling off out into the distance, which is very bad, has got many a capital ship killed in its day. So what you want to do ideally is make sure that the direction you're moving in you want to make sure that there's nothing within 10 kilometers but at the same time it's very important to keep the capital ship as close to the station as you can so as I stop there and you can see now if he lands here he's going to be fine if he lands there he's going to be fine but it's also a sphere so he can land above you he can land below you now for example, if he landed anywhere he lands now, he's going to be safe. Imagine this 10 kilometer circle as a bubble, and anywhere in that bubble he can land. So anywhere he lands now, he's going to be safe. But there's another problem. If he lands, the perfect, the perfect scenario for dropping a Sinosaur field on a station is that anywhere within that 10k bubble, there's nothing he's going to hit and bounce off of, and he's also going to be directly in zero range of the station. So what we need to do is basically move now another 10 kilometers away from this station. So we're just going to rough this out 
we're going to go, we're traveling at 1, 2, 3. So we want to see when we start to get distance from this station. So I've looked at where I was, and I'm waiting for this bar to come to where my ship was previously stationed. That's about there. So as you can see, this is basically as far away from me as he can possibly land. And as you can see there, he is still well within range of the station. So I'll come back in a little bit, I'll go back up a little bit. It's just a case of maneuvering around, just about there. So now I know that no matter where he lands in, he's not going to bounce off the station, and he's not going to be able to get bumped away. If he lands in and he's not at zero on the station, it means he can't dock. If he can't dock, it means that a hostile can come along and basically bump him further and further and further away from the station. And that's definitely not something you want. Now, this at the moment, I would quite happily light a sign of field here. So, and, and the ship would jump through and I'm sure he'd be fine. Happy days. Now, the only other thing to keep in mind here it's once you light the sign of field, your ship's stuck. It can't move anywhere. Um, and it can't move until the duration of the sign of field ends, which is basically, you've got to sit there for 10 minutes. Chances are you're going to die. Um, so in a big fleet, in a big fleet fight, jumping the sign of field in, not a problem. You, you, you're dead anyway. But when you sit here, chances are, especially as you're in null sec and low sec a lot of the time, someone's going to kill your little sign of ship. They do it all the time, just because they can. Um, it, it's a little free kill on their boards. If you put the right modules onto uh, newbie ships, onto rookie ships, you you can get them to fire off a dinosaur field, which makes it. You know, th what I'm saying is, you want to use the cheapest ship you can. You just want to put a dinosaur field on it and nothing else, because chances are it's going to die. Um, if you do have to use a more expensive ship, or you only have a more expensive ship available, then as the capital ship jumps through, it can start approaching the station at zero, and it can start repairing the, the Sinosaur field. Unless a big fleet comes along, you know, you put a rack of logistics drones and, and a capital wrapper onto a, onto a ship like this, and chances are they're going to be able to keep it alive reasonably. So we now know how we're jumping. We know what's important for jumping, we know where we're jumping to and how to get there. I think that pretty much covers um, most of it. The only thing I think I'm going to talk about is the different types of capital ships, where, like I was saying to you before, they have different jump ranges. So if we just quickly take a look back at my Archon here, let me show info on that. Again, like I showed you before, the jump range is 6.5 light years. Apparently that's its default jump range with no skills involved, no nothing. So you can see I've doubled my effective jump range just with the skills that I've had. If we then look at a Revelation, which is the Amar capital ship, that's, of course it's a capital ship, derp. it's the Amar Dreadnought, it's got five light years as a default range. So five by stop for the Revelation, 6.5 for the carrier so and obviously this also multiplies with your skills it's percentage based so carriers can basically jump further than dreadnoughts if we then go god for the life of me i can't even remember the name of the amar jump ship i literally can't remember and of course it's not going to be in here either jesus in in short what you you know using this jump drive calculator is pretty much a, a, a win-win. So what you want to make sure is when you're looking, obviously you're selecting. Uh, let's jump through. There you go. The arc. That was the answer. There was the answer. So we'll have a quick look in the market. We will look at the arc. And the default jump range on the arc. Five light years. So again. It's, it's slightly less than the carrier um, and basically jump freighters are just like any other capital ship except for jump freighters can use normal gates as well and this is the key difference between the jump freighter and any other capital the jump freighter can like normal jump through gates and it can use the sinusaurus field 
Obviously it can't sign the soil fluid into high sec because you can't light to sign the soil fluid in high sec. So what happens is you take your jump freighter, you do manual jumps over to, to Jita or Amar or wherever you're buying your stuff from, and then you capital jump it out into low sec. And then if you want to get it back in, you you make sure that you jump or light your sinusaural field in a system that's only one jump away from high sec. So you can jump through with your sino, warp straight to the gate, and you're in high sec, and you're safe. Again, it's never completely safe. Um, sinusaural fields can be seen by anyone in space in the system. As soon as you light it, it pops up on their overview if they have it configured properly, and they'll probably come and have a look. Chances are, if they get the opportunity to catch a jump freighter, they're going to take it. So that's uh, pretty much going to do it. Anything I've left out, please let me know. Any questions, by all means, stick them in the comments. And thank you very much. I'll see you soon.